Perry Pencil. Hello everyone, this is Perry Pencil. And you know what time it is, yeah boy. We have Deadpool 2 coming out in a few weeks. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna be working on drawing Cable. Now, I know Cable's already popular and out there already, but I want you to introduce it. I want to introduce it uh, Perry Pencil way. And let me say this, it's been a while since I've been on here. I miss you guys. And I do apologize for not being on here for a while, but I'm back in business. So let's get started on drawing Cable from Deadpool 2. All right. I want to get started off by dividing my page in half. Got my trusty image of Cable on my left here to go by. So let me let you know right out of the gate, this is going to be a bust high, or sorry, it's going to be a waist high drawing of Cable. And also he's going to be holding a gun. Now, we want to start off with a simple oval shape. And I want to apologize for uh, the pencil uh, weight being a little light here. So bear with me uh, because as this video goes along, um, you might have to struggle just a little bit to see it right now but I'm gonna do my best to darken it up. So I'm gonna start by measuring the head and go down to the chest with the index finger and thumb. We're gonna mark that. Mark it again for the waist. Once you've completed that, you can go ahead on and do a large oval that's the size of both of those heads. So that's basically two heads that equal the torso or upper portion of a body. We're gonna measure it again and we won't get that shoulder width with the shoulder width you want to go ahead on and mark it underneath the index finger slide it over and do the same thing on the right side or left side rather then put in my trusty uh, hanger or I call it coat hanger it's a triangular shape uh, pretty much that comes across the uh, the shoulder and then up behind the neck once completed go ahead and draw a nice size circle and between the edge of the shoulder and right where the oval is for the torso. Now, I got my HB pencil. I'm gonna start going a little darker here so everything will be refined for you and hopefully you'll be able to see a bit clearer. Put a line for his chest. And here you notice on the left arm, I'm putting in a cylinder. Cylinder is important for uh, what to put in for the arm, the bicep and tricep, because what it does, it defines the width. So if you notice, I have a, uh, a cylinder there and then a circle underneath that cylinder. And then I'm drawing an oval here. And this is kind of another cylinder, but it comes to a closed point, like where the wrist is. So it's a little thinner than, than when it starts out. This arm, which is his right arm, he's gonna be holding a gun. So you wanna have it go out away from his body. And if you notice, I measured the left arm to get the same width. This is a technique that I use where you're doing measurements. Now it's a little bit more technical than free drawing, but it will help you balance the figure out and look more correct. So I'm doing an oval and I'm putting in the uh, bicep and tricep here. And notice it's the same width as the left arm. And I'm using that same ball sketch joint or circle. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure the forearm on the right, or excuse me, the forearm on the left side. If you notice, um, thinking that I'm taking that now, I'm going from the elbow to the wrist, marking it, and this will help you pretty much be able to go ahead on and know where our th things are in relation to it, on um, what it's connected to. So now I can go ahead and make a decision, put that forearm in, arm in, and put the circle in for the wrist. Now we're going to box his his hand in. So you're going to put in a nice size square, a circle for the palm where the thumb is. That's the medial part of the hand in which the thumb articulates and moves. I'm gonna go ahead and draw oval for his waist and put two lines in. Now we're gonna focus on his face here. I've zoomed in so we can get a little, a closer look at what's going on here. Sketch in ovals for the eyes. And then if you notice, I did a triangular shape for the nose and then the corners of the mouth as I move down towards the chin. Now, uh, Cable's eyes, he's kind of older. He's an older guy, so he has a frown. And he's going to have a look, if I can describe it like as if the sun is in his eyes. 
So if you can understand what I'm saying, when the sun is in your eyes, you frown a whole lot. So that's how Cable, um, Cable's eyes are going to be. It's like the sun is in his eyes, but he's actually aged. He's an older character. For his nose, I'm starting out with the nostril on either side and then putting the, uh, the nostrils in and then putting the left side in. Now here I'm not really defining shape here, but if you follow step by step and uh, if you need to uh, pause the video at any given time, feel free. And uh, notice on the left side, I'm putting like kind of a star look or shape here because he, his left eye actually is lit up. If you saw the beginning of the trailer, it has like this mechanism in his eye, like he's part cyborg. You wanna sketch his lips in. Aligned underneath the lip for the bottom lip to define that. So now we're gonna deal with the sides of his face. Because he's aged, which just simply means he's a bit older, his jaw is not gonna be as refined, say as uh, what we call the Batman or Superman chin, where it's super chiseled and and looks all angular. But his he's gonna have like a, a chin that's kind of almost double, but he's thin. Then we're gonna deal with the upper part or side of his head. Then we'll go ahead and sketch his ears and his ears are peculiar. As you notice uh, the, this, the statue that I have on the left side here, you can look at that. His ears does stick out away from his head a little bit. So that's a char char characteristic that you can kind of look at. We're gonna deal with his hair. He does have a bit of a widow's peak, but not too much. The widow's peak is the piece that comes down in the middle of the head. Then he has another piece of the hair that kind of comes off. That's the part that you saw me do there where I have that coming out to the left side of his head. It's parted. And then on the right side, it's all one piece swooping to the right side. He almost has somewhat of a flat top. And the rest of the hair on the sides are shaved off. And you go ahead and close the top of his hair off. And get a little bit of detail in his ear uh, by putting the inner line of the ear canal in on the right and the left. He has a scar that comes from underneath his eye. This kind of looks like a, a war scar. And a little bit of detail of the eye that lights up on the left. And I'm drawing with my pencil here a little bit just so that we can see that the, uh, the line comes out to the side of his head from his eye. And also, of course, uh, getting a, a rid of a bit of the Wolverine look there, just clean that off a little bit. Make it more like a flat top. Adding my details to his face and chin. Now I'm going to go ahead and start to work on his neck. And again, there's different versions of uh, Cable. So at the age he is and the realism uh, of the actor that's portraying Cable, his neck is not super thick. Like in the comic books, he has a super thick neck and kind of built like Colossus almost. But this version of him is better because it's more, it's more realistic. So when we draw him, we don't have to draw him like uh, he's a hulkish character. I'm going to zoom out here. And now we're going to go ahead and start dealing with uh, the other portion or parts of Cable. Uh, starting with the shoulder, I'm dealing with the exterior here. Working my way around. And uh, putting in a strap on the, uh, on the left shoulder. And here uh, is very simplistic. Uh, you want to put in square shapes 
uh, that's the shapes that I'm using. And put his neck muscle in. And we're using wrinkle folds at this point. And he has a uh, t-shirt on. So we're gonna have wrinkle points that come right underneath the armpit out to the um, outside of the arm. I'm gonna start with the uh, bionic part of the arm, uh, which looks a little different to me from a regular human being arm because it's just, it's supposed to look more mechanical than natural. So you wanna put these cords in as I'm doing them. You can count them if you want to, or you can pause the video to slow down and take a look at the way or the direction I'm choosing to put the, uh, the mechanical cords of his arm in. And then the bottom portion of his arm, or forearm rather, is um, an outer layer of uh, mechanics. So if you look, I have uh, the part of the forearm that comes down as part, partially open there. Looks really cool. I really like it. We have a bolt there that holds that together and then another bolt on the other side. Then here's a separate component of the forearm that comes out from underneath that one. And you can go ahead and bring that down. And you can draw this right off the page, the bottom of his arm. Now in between those two bolts, you see there, there's a uh, inner part that locks together. And then the cords continue down through the other portion of his forearm. Same thing on a, in the middle of the forearm. It's another piece there that holds it together. And clean that up a little bit. Now we're going to deal with uh, the part that has the huge uh, bullets. And these look like uh, a pouch that holds three of them that goes in the part of the gun that's almost like a small rocket launcher. So here I used a simple cube shape and just put the three dividers in there, which basically are pockets for the bullets. And as you see, I went on ahead and switched the uh, pencil out for mechanical pencil just so I can get a little more detailed here. So you can see that the uh, bullets that are coming out of the pouches, you know, I can get a little bit more detailed instead of having that, that thick blunt point there. So, you know, just a way of reference um, and advice when you're drawing, you can switch between the two. Uh, notice I don't, I, I'm just using this. I don't always have time to sharpen the pencil and it takes time so always try and have a mechanical pencil handy if you need to switch between there. Now I'm going to direct your attention to the other side of his neck that has a mechanical cords in it. Like it looks like a cable probably had to have some alterations done to his anatomy and which uh, the left side of his body looks badly damaged so he has mechanical parts in it making him um, uh, cyborg which is part mechanical and part uh, flesh or human. And as you see I've done here, you just simply put some lines in there. Nothing spe spectacular or difficult. Uh, if you notice here, just put simple lines and try and keep them the same width apart. So, you know, as you go down, the lines are a repetition and they get smaller as it go to the bottom where the cord is thinner. And just do the same thing and repeat the same proce process for each cord. And notice I'm moving from left to right. And that's only because if I move from right to left, you want to be able to see uh, from right to from left to right what, what you're doing. So you, your hand doesn't cover up what you're trying to see when you're drawing it.
And I also want to mention every single drawing that I do, I don't always, always have the perfect answers. But I will say this, in drawing, whenever you're drawing any character, they all have different variations. Some of them are the same, some of them are different. It's more or less about problem solving. So you want to get into and get in the habit of problem solving and fixing the problem and not necessarily uh, having the answers all the time, but doing the best you can with the skills and understanding that you have. I'm going to bring your attention to the uh, the right arm. So immediately I uh, put the out, outer part of his muscle, elbow, and then leading it straight into where the circle is for the armpit. And then I have the outside of the uh, t-shirt or the contour of his body drawn there. And of course the wrinkle lines that come in with the t-shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and put that other strap in. Now that same strap that comes down, the only difference is he doesn't have uh, another pouch with three bullets on the right side. But he does have these uh, adjusters uh, that he has on there. If you notice, uh, you want to put it across the strap itself and then have a uh, a rectangular box and then you want to put the lines in the center and that way you'll get the shape that you're looking for. Then we're going to do with his t-shirt, cuts off right there near the bicep. You want to bring that forearm muscle around and then put that bicep muscle in just like that. And of course it's going to be flexed because he is holding a gun and it has weight to it. So we want to make that prominent. We want to show that he's lifting something or holding something. And then close that muscle up by bringing it around to the opposite side there. And we put like one wrinkle line in there for his chest. A little stubble for his chin. And here we're going to put in what looks like clips. Uh, I'm going out on the limb there to say that these are clips that go into a gun. So there's three of them. More than likely so as the cable needs he can go ahead and grab right over his um, to the middle of his um, his chest or and grab those clips if it need be and then slap it into the gun. It's right there on him so he has all of his uh, weapons and things at hand. and. Uh, extra bullets and stuff if he needs it. So these are the simple lines that go across each each one of them. And they come down to about uh, where his waist is. And then close them off at the bottom. Then he has a whole waist uh, component that goes around his entire torso or the lower part of his torso that holds everything in place. So when you think about drawing this, you're thinking about uh, you know, cable being prepared and having weapons on him and pouches. And just to mention Rob Lightfield, uh, you know, he helped kind of co-create this character. He really liked a lot of pouches and, and having accessibility with weapons and bullets and things like that. So right over here on, on, the, on his left side, he has a pistol. And the pistol takes up the remainder of the left side of his body. There's a strap there that holds the uh, gun in the holster. And close that off at the bottom. And what he's wearing just simply goes off at the bottom. Add another part to the handle on that pistol, and then it's uh, add a little bit of detail to his upper chest, and take everything else off the page.
Now I want to start concentrating on the gun that he's holding with his right hand. You want to take that gun, the edge of it, or the what they call the butt of the gun, right off the edge of, to the edge of the page, which would be the handle. As you can hold it both ways, you can hold it with one hand that he has on the trigger, and you can hold it with uh, that hand and the, the handle that's at, that's going to be in there soon. And then you can hold it by the actual back part of it that I'm drawing right now. And as you see, it has like, looks like a piece of cloth over it or something like that. And for this part, you can follow it step by step by pausing it. Uh, usually when I do guns, I don't necessarily have all of the answers of the shapes and you know the way it's um, coming together uh, because there are different components to it and it's very complex um, parts of a gun but if you feel free at any time you need to pause and take a look at what I'm doing and then uh, go from there but line by line if you notice I'm, I'm putting in what works around the actual hand of cable so I have the index finger here and then I have the uh, middle finger ring finger and the pinky notice the pinky is up higher because it's uh, closed off by the handle itself. And here I'm using simple shapes like squares, circles for bolts, and then I'll use multiple lines that goes over his shoulder. You notice I used three lines already, and then a fourth line. And here I'm putting in the scope. The scope I'm gonna have go over his right shoulder. It's gonna cover it, most of it anyway. Another bolt there, and then square that off to make it look three dimensional, add that line, and then it's another L shape right there. And of course, the rest of the gun is going to go behind his head and off the page. And I'm putting in lines for uh, the front part of the gun that is held by the, the, the left hand. And then putting in the other handle that I spoke about earlier. That's actually where the clip goes. And let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you're excited about uh, the upcoming Deadpool 2. Uh, I know I am. I've been following the comic books for years now. Um, and I uh, actually remember when Lightfield was working on X-Force. And uh, there's a few characters in there I'm excited about. Uh, let me know which other characters you want me to draw. I know that I'm going to work on Domino next because it was correct, uh, requested. And uh, until next time, take care. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe by pressing this round button at the bottom. Also, click on one of the two top videos at the top. Please like this video, tell a friend, and share it on Facebook. Thank you. Perry Pencil.